like we're walking on sunshine as we walk on in here. <laughs> hey, there is no way I'm not going to love a state when you enter your borders and you look up at your state flag and you see emblazoned on that a mama grizzly. At least I think it's a mama grizzly. Great to be in the Golden State where positive change is coming. As Michael was saying, positive change is just right around the corner. And Californians, you have a clear choice this year. And really, for some of us on the outside, it looks like it's a pretty simple choice that you have to make. You can either vote for the status quo, Latin for the mess we're in. You can vote for more taxes, more government overreach, more regulation, and more unemployment. Or you can vote for real change, positive change for we the people. It can start here in California with that vote November 2nd. Choices you have to put California and all of America back to work. It's really pretty simple. You've got some simple choices, California. I know you're going to make the right choices come November 2nd because you've done it before. Thanks to you and the Golden State, you brought us our American hero, Ronald Reagan. You did it before. about now what this great country needs to get back on track it's just that Reagan common sense those principles those time-tested truths that he applied Reagan common sense solutions lower taxes smaller smarter government less overreach and intrusion strong unapologetic national defense remember it was we win you lose as Michael was explaining. The momentum is with us, but now is not the time to let up. You know, now is not the time to celebrate. Not quite yet. We've got 17 days to go. We can't be thinking that it's over yet and that we've got it in the bag. You know, as Yogi would have said, it ain't over till it's over. We've got to leave the dancing to someone else for right about now. But soon, soon we'll all be dancing. We'll be celebrating because California will be put back on the right track along with the rest of America. Victory 2010. Now is when we kick it in gear. Now is when we have to dig deep. We have some great candidates up here and around the state. We have great candidates who are counting on you to show up and to cast those votes, to do all that you can, though, between now and November 2nd with the phone calls and the precinct walks and the literature drops. And you got to put in your 16, 18, 20 hour days. You have to exhaust yourself. It feels good. You're going to be able to know on November 3rd that you did all that you can to restore our republic and renew America. We've got to give it all that we've got because that ground game over the next two weeks will make the difference between winning and losing. Saving our republic as we know it and as our Constitution had intended it with equality and opportunity for all and respect for life and liberty. We're talking about life and death decisions that are going to be made based on those who are elected come November 2nd. Winning means that we secure our nation, we secure our free markets, we, should, we secure our freedoms and we restore American exceptionalism. So let me ask you, are you ready to fight for your freedom? Are you ready to take it back from an out of control, really out of sync with the American way of thinking Congress? Are you ready to take it back from them, put it on the side of the people? Here's a question for you. What do you think that we should do with a, a Nancy Pelosi, a Congress that... What should we do with these folks who spent more than $7 trillion just in the past two years incurring enormous, unsustainable, immoral debt? And they did 
did all that, and yet they couldn't even muster, you know, the effort, I guess, to pass a budget. They couldn't lift a finger to stop the biggest tax increase in U.S. history that's going to slam us to the mat come January 1. This tax increase that's going to force so many of our small businesses to tap out. You know, they were able to accomplish that, and these politicians, though, who are to be working for you, you're their employers. What do you do with employees like that who aren't doing the job? You fire them! You fire Pelosi, retire Reed, and their whole band of merry followers, and we get back on the right track. Now, what do you think that we should do with a Congress that shoves European-style health care down our throats and takes over private industry? shoves aside the mom and pop small business interests in America and ultimately erodes the American entrepreneurial spirit and that work ethic that we try to teach our children. They do all that and yet they can't answer the question, where are all the jobs? What do you do? You fire them and it's nothing personal. You just replace them with those who will do the job, right? conservative candidates across California and across our other 49 states, then in a couple of weeks from now, we will, we will have taken the gavel away from Nancy, and we will get on the right track. Now, I'm here in California, and we're traveling across the country to help the RNC and help the GOP, because this election is so important. You wouldn't be here today if you didn't know, too, that America is at a turning point. We're at a tipping point. People know something has gone terribly wrong with our government, and it has gotten so far off track. But people also know that there is nothing wrong in America that a good old-fashioned election can't fix. Now, the thing I always loved best about California's Reagan, oh, and for the press, yes, I shall be invoking Reagan's name again, and again, and again, and again. You won't be hearing me invoking or quoting Alinsky or Mao. We're kind of a Reagan kind of crowd around here. about Ronald Reagan. He didn't waste time always looking backwards and pointing fingers and placing blame. No, he was rock solid and he was optimistic and he was unwavering in his acknowledgement of the strength and the goodness of the American people. He understood the power of the individual and that government is not the answer. He understood this country because he believed in us. He believed in us the little guy, and he said that with all due respect, the little guy, just unpretentious, hardworking, patriotic, pro-family, freedom-loving, middle-class, job-creating little guys. That's whom Reagan could relate to. Freedom-loving little guys, so how about we make November 2nd Freedom Day and we take it back for the little guy? much. We ask for a good job in our own hometown so that we can secure ourselves and secure our families. We ask for a fiscally and a physically secure union. And we ask for an honest government that is on our side and won't be riding our back. We ask for leaders with servants' hearts and ears to hear what the people are asking them to do for us. And we're not asking for much from them. We're asking for leaders who won't mortgage our kids' future with trillions more in debt, and leaders who understand that raising federal taxes in a time of economic woe is a recipe for disaster. It's a recipe for bankruptcy of our country, ultimately causing the people to rely on a centralized government, a big government, to provide for them. Wait a minute, though. Perhaps 
some of our current leaders do understand that one, and they're doing it to you anyway. We ask for leaders who recognize our foundation, that America is the idea of America, is being the most generous country on earth, the most prosperous country, the safest country, and that we, united under God, we are an exceptional country, and that is nothing to apologize for. alternative and it's nothing to apologize for well we've got a president today who's getting pretty good at apologizing but see he's apologizing to all the wrong people <laughs> so mr. president with all due respect next time that urge to apologize waves on over you I, I have some suggestions for who to apologize to how about apologizing to the 15 million Americans who are looking for work today Sorry, oops, after the three million jobs were lost, after your forced through stimulus package came down the pike. Remember the trillion dollar stimulus package that we were promised it had to go through? We were promised unemployment would never rise above 8% if it were passed with all those shovel ready projects, remember? Yeah, yeah. Actually, just apologize for the stimulus itself and. Make a joint apology, you know, because you don't want to leave out Harry and Nancy and Barbara and all the others who are part of that lemon of a spending boondoggle, the biggest boondoggle in U.S. history. Really, folks, what did taxpayers get with that trillion bucks? Besides more debt, oh, here, here's a couple of examples right here in Cali. Here's a couple of things you got. Los Angeles got their $111 million from the stimulus package to create jobs, and they managed to eke out 55 jobs out of that $111 million. That's $2 million, jo $2 million per job. Speaking of $2 million, that's how much of stimulus money was given to the California Academy of Sciences to <clears throat> capture, photograph, and study ants in East Africa. I'm not kidding, but it gets better. The lead investigator justified that project by saying everyone has run into ants, he said, and now we need to listen to them. So let me get this straight. The left has been bragging for months about those expenditures and all of those shovel-ready projects that they were funding, and now we know all along that what they were really shoveling was not asphalt. <laughs> we can't get the folks in Washington to listen to us, but they'll waste millions of your dollars and China's dollars on studying and hearing from the ants in East Africa. That's the priorities of politicians. How about, speaking of California, the priority of Barbara Boxer chairing the committee that has control over, she'd be able to turn on the water just up the road in the Central Valley. Yes. To save those family farms and to save those crops that have fed our nation for generations and yet Instead, she'd rather protect a two-inch fish. That little stickleback thing. Now where I come from, we call it two-inch fish. We call that bait. And the people are more important than the bait. Oh, our priorities. Well, how 